come with us into the study of Sloane Cunningham, vice president in charge of news of a well-known television network. It's quite an unusual study. Other men of wealth and culture might boast row upon row of leather-bound books. But in Sloane Cunningham's private sanctuary, the eye goes at once to a wall, which is filled with rectangles of light, the familiar shapes of television screens, nine of them, each one tuned to a different channel. And right now, every one of them is tuned to a nightmare, to a vision of disaster, to a preview of Armageddon. It's difficult to believe that only five weeks ago, the atomic submarine Orion had been launched on the Hood Canal. Now the SSBN-719 and its crew of 90 officers and men is in the hands of the military authorities in Peking, following the accidental firing of the Polaris A-3 missile, which destroyed the northern tip of the Shantung uplands. The diplomatic efforts to obtain the release of the crew are continuing, while angry commentary continues to pour out of both China and the Soviet Union. Their rivalry momentarily forgotten in this dramatic opportunity to score points. Sloan, the what's happening? The war for Is there anything new? Peter, weren't you listening to the radio upstairs? No, I was too nervous. My hand was shaking so much I couldn't put on my makeup. <laughs> still another crisis, eh? Oh, don't be funny. Tell me what's going on. There is still no word from Peking. Nothing from the Chinese. No radio contact with our embassy. There's a rumor that a mob set it on fire. Good Lord. It's just a rumor, Petra. But as for the sailors, the death sentence still stands. All 110 men, starting with the officers. But they can't kill them in cold blood. My dear, several hundred Chinese were killed in that attack. But it was an accident. It wasn't an act of war. And what about the Russians? What are they doing? Don't ask me. There was a report of a battle between Russian and Chinese troops on the border. Well, maybe that's all it'll come to. Maybe the Chinese and the Russians will make it their fight. We're either allies or enemies, my sweet. By the way, you look very lovely tonight. I see you dressed for the occasion. Sloane, this is insane. It's no night for you to talk to Warren about... About anything. Your boyfriend is the one who wanted this meeting. But you suggested tonight, even though you knew about the crisis. Well, I didn't know anything about you and Warren until a week ago. Oh, please, don't make it any more difficult than it is. Difficult? I'm trying to make it easy for you, darling. That's why I suggested this meeting, so the three of us, you and Warren and I, can sit down like civilized people and simply talk about the situation. Like civilized people? Sloan, you sound like someone in one of your bad television plays. <laughs> My department is the news, darling. <laughs> well, your news hasn't been very good lately, either. Ah, there he is. Want to show him in? Well, I suppose I have to, since you gave Dolores the night off. Well, I didn't want servants around to listen at keyholes. Sloan, Warren's here. Well, how are you, Warren? How come you're not watching our network, Sloan? <laughs> or I guess I should say your network. Something tells me I'm not going to be there very long. Oh, because of me? <laughs> or because of the Chinese? I hate Gallo's humor. How does it look? Do you really think they mean it about executing those men? Well, sounded like it to me. You heard what the Secretary of War said, didn't you? That we would consider it an act of war. Yes, that's right. So you see, our whole discussion tonight might not mean very much in a few hours. It won't be a question of who lives with who, just who lives, period. That's why I say we should forget it. We'll talk about it some other time. There may not be another time, Petra. Oh, you see, Warren doesn't want to put it off. In fact, Warren may be lucky that I suggested this meeting tonight. I mean, how many people do you know in Westchester that have a bomb shelter? Did you know about that, Warren? No, I didn't. Man, we bought the house from... Oh, good Lord, Pet. Was it eight years ago? Well, anyway, he installed it right out there in the backyard. Completely underground with solid concrete blocks. Got its own generator and everything. <laughs> uh, Pet and I, uh, <laughs> I use it once in a while. <laughs> Instant honeymoons, you know. Let's get this over with, Sloan. First of all, I assume that if Petra leaves you, 
I leave the network? Well, it might be the best thing that happened to you out of all this, Warren. What are you earning now? Thirty-five? Forty? That's no kind of money for a grown man. I wonder if Petra realizes how little money that is. Don't be gross, Sloan. You take off taxes and stuff, and what have you got left? Petra spends that much on her nails. Petra knows all about my finances. But you don't know anything about Petra. No, no, Warren. My wife doesn't know the first thing about money. She never has. She hasn't looked at a checkbook balance in the last ten years. Let me carry her purse, Warren. Wonder why it's so heavy? Credit cards. You see, Petra, I told you he didn't want to talk. Practical. Oh, hey, Warren, come on. What's more practical than money? Pet likes to eat well. We run up restaurant bills of a thousand a month. Sometimes more. Her clothes cost more than you earn in a year. And this house... So that's your argument, huh? Food, clothing, and shelter. Oh, which reminds me. Denton ought to be on the air by now. Who? Huh? Uh, Denton Barnes, our newest hot-shot newscaster. You know him, Warren? Yes, I know him. Oh, now, who the devil is that? Oh, I don't know. I wasn't expecting anyone. I'll go see. Uh, whoever it is, we'll have to get rid of them. Our meeting is supposed to be private. Uh, sounds like a couple. Oh, so our neighbors. What are they doing here? Hey there, Sloan. How are you? Hey, hope you don't mind me and Tina dropping in. You We're uh, sort of busy, Chip. Oh, we just figured if anybody knows what's going on in this cockeyed world, it'd be you. We thought you might be down in the newsroom or someplace, but... We saw your lights on. Oh, that's right, you know. We figured you'd be on the old hotline to the White House, but here you are. Chip, I assure you, I don't know any more about the situation than you do. Uh, this is Warren Crisp. He works for me at the network. Warren, this is Tina and Chip Lowry, my neighbors. I know. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, our neighbors. Uh, Sloan, turn on the news. That's what they came to hear, isn't it? Yes. All right, I'll do that. Denton Barnes ought to be on by now. At this bulletin, just in. The Dutch news agency reports that Russian MiGs have bombed and sunk the U.S. carrier Terrapin in the Sea of Japan. But there is no information about who piloted the planes. But why are the Russians mad at us? It was the Chinese we bombed accidentally. Don't they hate the Chinese? Well, maybe they weren't Russian planes. You never know who is doing what these days. Listen, he's got a bulletin. We've just received word that there'll be an announcement from the White House shortly. Meanwhile... Local civil authorities are being instructed to prepare for a full or partial alert. That hasn't been made clear yet. However, it might be suggested that some precautions be taken. Precautions? What does that mean? What do they want us to do? Well, I suppose there is one thing we could do. The shelter. We could watch the news there, couldn't we, Sloan? Just to be on the safe side. For heaven's sake, Petra, let's not panic. Oh, no, she may be right, Warren. Things are moving pretty fast. The Chinese will start shooting those officers. The Russians will sink our ships, expecting we're going to dump on them. We may not panic, but somebody else might. And then they'll be pressing those buttons, you know. Please, Warren. All right. I'm not arguing. Have you got anything to drink in that place? <laughs> What's the matter? Need a little bottled courage? I wouldn't mind a drink uh, right about now. There's a two-week supply of everything in the place. Well, it's no use standing around, then. Pedro, you take these people out to the shelter. I'll turn out the lights and stuff in the house. Warren, uh, you better grab some liquor anyway. It's better than the brand I keep below. Petra, maybe you better change your clothes. That uh, outfit doesn't look too comfortable for a bomb shelter. No, no, I, I don't want to change. I'm fine the way I am. Are you sure? Oh, look at Tina here. Wearing that nice jumpsuit. It's almost as if you uh, <laughs> were dressed for the occasion. Please, please let, let's just go. Tell me, Tina, uh, did you dress for the occasion? Is that why you and Chip came over? It looks long. We've always been good neighbors. Now, you know that. Why, sure, I know that, Chip, but, uh... Well, all right. I'll be a good neighbor, too. <laughs> Let's get started, folks. Let's not keep Armageddon waiting. Well, what do you think of the place? Cozy, eh? 
Nothing but the best for you, Sloan. That door weighs a ton. What's it made of, anyway? It's lead line, Chip. The whole shelter is lead line because of radiation. I mean, let's face it. That's what the place is for, right? A hideout against the good old atom bomb? Oh, I hope nobody is dumb enough oh, to... Oh, look at the history of the world, Tina. Dumb? <laughs> People are dumb enough to do anything. You really spent a lot of money on this place, Sloan. But how come you've only got one TV set? That's not like you. Well, there's nothing here when we bought the house. Just a big hole in the ground. And we just made a few improvements. Yeah, it reminds me of one of those uh, underground places. What do, you, what do you call them? Uh, bunkers. Yes, that's right, bunkers. You could uh, live in this place for weeks if you had to. As long as you didn't run out of food and water. And as you can see, I've got plenty of that. You mean there's a water supply? It's in all those tin drums, Chip. So is the food. Uh, not just that. Take a look at all the rest of the stuff. I've got tools, knives and forks, spoons, blankets, medical supplies. What are those gadgets over there? Those are for radiation metering. Radiation? Oh, I, I hate the sound of that word. Uh, this is a... Well, it's the rate meter, the dose meter, and the charger. Hey, you've even got a shotgun in here. <laughs> Two of them, Chip. And plenty of shells. I didn't know that was in the civil defense manual. Oh, it isn't. But you know what happens when people realize you've got the only game in town. Uh, look, uh, why don't we uh, uh, turn on the TV and get some news, huh? All right, Chip. That's a very good idea. Oh, look, there's an announcer again, Denton Barnes. The bulletin just in. There will be an emergency address to the nation at 8.30. Meanwhile... Here's a report from Jim Brewer at our Washington News Bureau. Uh, looks like Jim isn't ready with that report. So we'll switch you back to our studio for an interview with Jay's Hawthorne, taped earlier. We've seen that interview, Sloan. Uh, try Universal TV. Well, that's not my network, Chip. But it is my TV set, to say nothing of my show. Uh, yeah, yeah, Sh uh, sure, Sloan. Look, Denton Barnes is back. We now have an unconfirmed report. Repeat, unconfirmed. From the Detection and Tracking Center in Colorado. Be quiet, be quiet. According to the main computer, six to ten missiles, perhaps more, tracked from a northern latitude on course for the eastern seaboard of the United States. Chip, we're going to be killed. Shut up, Tina. Take it easy, Mrs. Lowry. You heard what he said. The report is still unconfirmed. It may be just one of those rumors. There have been many rumors every day. What, what happened to the TV set? The darn thing is off. I didn't touch it. They just stopped transmitting, I suppose. Well, then, maybe it's true. Maybe they've done it. They've dropped the thing. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the end of the world. If there's any such thing as a world nightmare in the future, this must be how it would happen. Who hasn't thought of this unthinkable moment? Five people in the underground shelter in a wealthy suburb of New York are actually living such a nightmare. But has Sloane Cunningham completely forgotten his personal crisis in the face of this world-shattering event? Can matters of love and loyalty survive in the face of matters of life and death? We'll find out when we return to the second act of Shelter. This cute new hygienist who cleaned my teeth told me in no uncertain terms how badly stained my teeth were from tobacco. Well, I was thinking about asking her out, but after that I was just too embarrassed. Topol Smoker's Tooth Polish, a special combination of polishing agents and a rich foaming cleaner formulated to help remove ugly yellow tobacco stains. Topol is gentle enough to be used instead of regular toothpaste. Since I've been using Topol, the tobacco stains just don't build up. Topol. Fluoride in the red package, mint flavor in the blue. Gosh, our 30th reunion's coming up soon. You'll be the youngest looking gal there. Not with these age spots on my hands. I've heard about a cream that fades those spots. Porcelana? Yeah. I've been tempted to try it. Do it. Porcelana fade cream. Rub it in daily and watch those age spots start to fade in just six weeks for many women. We'll be at the reunion soon. Notice my hands? You're wearing your class ring. Because Porcelana faded my age spots. Porcelana. When results count. Use only as directed. Boy, nice shot round. Oh, morning, Anderson. 
Hey, I thought you were flying to St. Louis for that big conference. I took your advice instead. How's that? Well, yesterday we had the Michigan Bell Conference operator arrange a teleconference between our Detroit, St. Louis, and New York offices. Yeah? Well, by using our speaker phones, we were all able to participate, and we wrapped up the whole project in no time. I told you so. Yeah, it was so quick and easy. I can't believe I never thought of it before. <laughs> I mean, everybody saved all that travel time, expense, and hassle. Sure, and a teleconference costs a lot less than a plane ticket. Yeah, and do you know the conference operator told me if we needed to, they could actually connect us with up to 25 locations simultaneously. <laughs> Guess there's no end to what you can accomplish with a telephone. Yeah, well, there's another big advantage to teleconferencing. What's that? It gave me a Saturday of golf instead of a lonesome trip to St. Louis. Yep. Teleconferencing is one more way to get things done today. Fortunately, what we are all hearing now is only fiction. The creation of a creative writer's brain. But we can all imagine what it would be like to be one of the five people in the bomb shelter of Sloan Cunningham, hiding from the terror that has been unleashed from the sky. Five people waiting to learn if their own day of reckoning has arrived. Sloan Cunningham, a man whose private world is about to shatter. Petra and Warren, lovers who may be parted even before they're joined. Chip and Tina Lowry, the uninvited guests at a party that may end only too soon. Why, why don't they tell us something? Why don't they let us know what's happening? Sloan, you're supposed to be the news boss of that network. Why don't you call them or something? That's one thing I never installed on the shelter chip of phone. Wouldn't do any good if I did call anyway. Look, uh, uh, something's happening on the TV. Hold on. It, it's Barnes again. Oh, he looks awful. We have been advised that nuclear devices have been detonated over at least four cities. No further details are available. But we have a recorded telephone conversation from correspondent Brett Johnson in Buffalo, New York. Please stand by. It's... it's really happened. I'll be quiet, Tina. Listen. We're having a little trouble with the transmission. Oh, here it is. Fireball so bright that it looked as if the sun had fallen to earth, temporarily blinding everyone who saw it, including myself, despite the fact that it must have detonated hundreds of miles away. Within 20 minutes, another fireball, even brighter than the first, was seen to the south, possibly between Cleveland and Pittsburgh. Thank you, Brett. While no word has yet been received on nuclear missiles in this locality, the following steps should be taken immediately. If you are near a public or private shelter, proceed there at once. Thank the Lord we're here. Repeat, do not take time to collect any personal belongings or attempt to reach other members of your family, with the possible exception of small children. I just can't believe this is really happening. If you are unable to reach a shelter, proceed to the basement of the nearest building. You really had the right idea, Sloan. If you are in a large public building with no access to the basement, proceed to the middle floors. Stay as far away from outside walls and windows as you can. Oh, why must we listen to this? It doesn't apply to us. If you are in your own home, remember that the primary danger will be fire. Remove all quick-burning materials. Shut off main electric and gas lines. I never thought it would actually happen. We were lucky for a long time, Tina. Our luck finally ran out. Close Venetian blinds. Fill bathtubs, sinks, buckets, and other containers with water. And remember... If there is a blast in your vicinity, it will not be safe to venture out of your shelter until you are advised about fallout conditions. We'll be leaving the air at this time, but we expect to resume broadcasting shortly. Meanwhile, keep tuned to your local civil defense radio station for further bulletins and instructions. Sloan, where's your radio? Here it is. It's dead. I, I can't get a sound out of it. How long have those batteries been in there? A year or two? And you're supposed to be the big communications expert, Sloan. You don't even know enough to change a battery. Tina, how many times do I have to tell you to keep your mouth shut? That's right, Mrs. Lowry. Mustn't defend the man who's giving you shelter. Well, I... I'm sorry. I didn't mean anything, of course. Sloan, what do you think it means? Going off the air? Now, wait a minute. They're back on again. 
That didn't take long. Here is the first report on the effect of the device that exploded 30 minutes ago. Oh, boy. An entire city has been engulfed in flames. The blast pressure following the heat wave has leveled every structure within a five-mile radius. Casualties are estimated in the thousands. Witnesses have reported that the mushroom cloud which first appeared over the city has now spread out within a 30 to 40-mile radius. Uh, one moment, please. That's it? That's the end of us? Oh, the devil it is. We're here, we're safe. What more can we expect? There'll be more bombs. We'll all be dead. No, the retaliatory strikes must have started by now. The anti-missile weapons. They're bound to have done something. Maybe... Maybe the worst is over. The worst may be yet to come, Chip. Fallout. Radiation. Sloan, where's that manual? Here it is. What does it say? Uh, radiation symptoms. Nausea. Lack of appetite. Fatigue. Oh, good Lord. I have all that now. Uh, fever. Bleeding. Hair fallout. <laughs> That's why they call it fallout, you see. Because you lose your hair. <laughs> no, no. Don't, Petra. Well, I don't know about you people, but personally, I can use a drink. How about you, Warren? No, I can use one, all right. And so can Petra. Good. Good. Well, it looks like we might be here for days, doesn't it? Maybe even weeks. It'll give us a lot of time to talk. To work things out between us. Are you crazy, Sloan? With the world burning up out there, you want to talk about the future? Well, why not? If it's the end of the world, I want to know how it ends. I hate unfinished reports. Don't you, Pedro? Remember when they killed the science fiction series? You were upset because you never knew if your favorite characters lived or died? I can't talk about such things now, Sloan. Well, look, we may survive this thing. And if we do, who goes where? So, let's talk now. Let's settle this thing before anything else happens. Sloan, this thing was settled weeks ago. Petra is leaving you. That's all there is to it. Yes, but the reasons we met tonight... The reason we met was to work out the terms of the agreement. To find out if you were going to let Petra go without any fuss. Without another war... We love each other. Atom bombs don't change that. Don't they? You fell in love in a different world, Warren. It's not the same out there. The world out there is full of smoke and fire. If you don't believe it, go out and look for yourself. Although you probably like it better in here. Oh, so that's it, huh? You expect gratitude? Because you invited me into this... A hole in the ground? Well, if you don't like it here, Warren, you can always leave. You can both leave. Right now. Hand in hand. Oh, no. No. Well, how about it? You said you wanted Petra to leave my house as soon as possible? Why not now? Don't be stupid. That's right. Go ahead, Warren. Drink my whiskey. Use my shelter. Here. Drink it all yourself. Oh, now, come on, Warren. No offense. Go ahead. You can have the scotch. You can have Petra, too. I told you I wasn't going to make any fuss. It's still a free country. As long as it lasts. He's goading you, Warren. I'm being reasonable, darling. Warren, you came over to settle this issue, and now it's settled. It's all yours. There's the door. Good luck. The word for your sense of humor is warped. Warren, it's not a joke. I said you can have my wife. You just can't have my shelter. That's fair enough, isn't it? You can't throw me out, Sloan. Not even you would do that. Oh, can't I? You see this, Warren? It's a shotgun. Hey, hey, Sloan, do, do I it. see it. What's the point? This is the point. You can go, Warren. You can leave too, Petra. It's okay, you have my blessings. Go out there? Are you crazy? I'm not going out there. You said you didn't want anything that belonged to me. You said you didn't care about security. Well, okay, you can prove that you meant what you said. Hey, Sloan, be, be reasonable, huh? This is no time to settle domestic now, you're quarrels. You're a guest here, Chip. Just remember that. I'm not going. And you're not putting Warren out either. 
You can't be that vicious, Sloan. You, you can't be that vindictive. You remember how you came in, don't you, Warren? That's the way you're leaving. Good luck out there. I wouldn't go back to the house if I were you. It isn't the safest place. It doesn't even have a basement. When the blast comes, the house will probably fall in around your ears. No, the best bet is the main highway. There'll be cars, people thinking they can escape to the hills. You can't put me out, Sloan. Even you couldn't do that. Well, a man can only be so generous, Warren. I've already given you my hospitality, my whiskey, my wife. You just can't have my shelter, too. There's nothing but death out there. You can't do this. And what's your decision, Petra, darling? If Warren leaves now, heads into those hills, you may never catch up with him again. You may be right, Petra. It's better if we leave right now, together. We still have time to find another shelter. Warren, what are you saying? You really expect me to, to go out there? It's where I'm going, apparently. Oh, but, but we'll die. There'll be heat, fire, fallout. No, no, I can't. I can't. Don't ask me to do it. I, I, I can't. I can't. <laughs> well, Warren, it looks as if you're going alone. Yes, that's the way it looks, all right. Okay, then let me take something with me. Some food, some water. Lord knows what it's like out there. Yes, of course, Juan. Only too glad to help. There you are, my friend. One can of water, one can of biscuits. I'm afraid that's all I can spare right now. And how about a gun? A gun? What for? There may be rioting, looting. I may get killed for these two cans of food and water. I'm sorry, Warren, you can't have a gun. I've seen that stupid trick on television too often. You've got two shotguns. Take the shells out of one of them if you don't trust me. Just give me something to take care of myself with. Please, Sloan. Okay, Warren. Okay, if you think an unloaded gun will help you. There you are. Use it in good health. Petra, <laughs> you sure about this? Warren, I, I can't. Don't ask me. No, I won't ask you again. I'll probably never even see you again. There's the door, Warren. Shut it carefully behind you. So Warren Crisp has left the shelter of Sloan Cunningham and left more than safety behind him. He has left the woman he loves, who didn't love him quite enough to leave shelter behind her. What will he find out there? What kind of dark world has the angered Adam left him? We'll make the journey with him when we return for Act Three of Shelter. Taking a laxative? Yeah, traveling throws my system off. But so can a laxative. Not Metamucil. That's Metamucil? Metamucil Instant Mix in a little packet. Oh. Easy to take along. And easy on your system. Because Metamucil is made from natural fiber with no chemical stimulants, more doctors recommend Metamucil for really gentle relief. Mmm, I like that orange flavor. Mm -hmm, me too. Easy to take. If not nature, Metamucil. Read label and follow directions. Hotel coupon and discount offers are confusing and limited. That's why the world's largest lodging chain invites you to call Best Western before you call anyone else. Chances are you'll find the Best Western just where you need it most at a price you'll want to pay. No strings attached. Call one day, one day, five, two, eight. One, two, three, four. Best Western. One, eight, one, day, five, two, eight. Edna? Mm. Do you have the key? Oh. oh, oh, never mind. We forgot to lock the door. I'll hang up the coats, Melvin. Good girl. Oop. Melvin. Mm-hmm? Take a look in the closet. Edna. Yes, Melvin? There's a dog in the closet. Hiya. Hi. Uh, don't worry. It's me, McGruff, the uh, crime dog. Uh, he talks. Of course. How else could I tell you not to leave your door unlocked? Oh, 
you're McGruff the crying dog. Edna, you're talking to a dog. Shh. I'll uh, say it again. Lock your windows and doors. Use a timer to turn lights on and off. Oh. And uh, tell your neighbors to keep an eye on your house. Good idea. Uh, by the way, you got a neighborhood watch program? Uh, neighborhood watch? <laughs> What's that? Uh, that's where you and your neighbors learn how to protect each other and your neighborhood. Oh. But uh, find out more. Write to McGruff. Box 6600 Rockville, Maryland, and help the... Uh, take a bite out of crime. Edna, lock the door. Gotcha. A message from the Crime Prevention Coalition and the Ad Council. telling you the story of an imaginary future, a story of an unthinkable future, in which a terrible decision seems to have been made. But it was another kind of decision that brought Warren Crisp to the home of Sloan and Petra Cunningham. He came for a decision about how their lives were to be lived. Now that decision seems to have been made for them, by forces beyond their control, the wild forces contained within the heart of matter and within the hearts of irrational men, Petra has made her choice. Safety first, love second. And now, Warren has pushed open the lead-lined door of the shelter and stands looking about him. The quiet strikes him like a wet drop cloth. The country sounds of crickets seem misplaced. The air smells like dew-soaked grass. He had expected black ashes and the smell of death. But there is nothing of the kind. He looks at the Cunningham house in front of him and sees a light. The electricity is still working. That's something anyway. Slowly, Warren approaches the house and hears a sound even more comforting than crickets. The sound of a human voice. The release of the officers and the men of the Orion came as a welcome relief to the frightened capitals of the world, where rumors of military activity have been rampant for the past 24 hours. Now it appears that happily, all the rumors have been proved false, that the stark realities of the crisis which faced the world were somehow vivid enough to allow rational decision to prevail over dangerous impulse. What's going on in there? Somebody's watching TV in Sloan's study. But who? Warren draws closer until he is standing outside the window of Sloan Cunningham's study. The room is illuminated only by the light of the television set, which faces the man sitting in a leather chair. Warren moves closer, trying to identify this calm observer of world disaster. There's something familiar about that guy. But who is he? In the study, the man reaches across and turns off the television set. And for a moment, his face is lit. And Warren's face lights up with recognition. Denton Barnes. It's Denton Barnes. But what's he doing here? I've just been watching him... In the shelter, on camera. And now Warren realizes something else. There is a camera in the study. A camera. A lighting arrangement. And a desk that looks very familiar. Closed circuit. A closed circuit setup. Now the adrenaline is pumping in Warren Crisp's body. Swiftly, he races to the front entrance of Sloan Cunningham's house. He finds the front door open. Luckily for the door. Because in his present frame of mind, Warren would just as soon have kicked it open. Barnes? Denton Barnes! Good Lord. Warren, what, what the devil are you doing here? That's funny. I was about to ask you the same question, Denton. Warren, don't get sore now. I mean... Nice little setup you've got here, Denton. I didn't know you were doing your newscasts right from the boss's house. <laughs> well, what is it? Some new policy? It's a joke, Warren. Nothing but a joke. Uh, listen, uh, would you mind 
putting that gun down. A joke, huh? And whose idea was it, Denton? Sloan's idea. I swear it. I had nothing to do with it. Oh, yeah? <laughs> right. I'm beginning to get the gag. He gets us all into the shelter. And then you begin your little closed-circuit broadcast. Direct to his private audience, Look, huh? Warren, he said you two guys were buddies, that uh, you were always pulling practical jokes on each other. And... Oh, yeah, that's us. A million laughs every day. He said it was your turn now, that uh, you'd been teasing him about his air raid shelter, and he figured this would be a terrific gag. Oh? Well, tell me about it, Denton. Go ahead. Look, uh, just forget it, huh? The, the, the joke's over. I said, tell me about it, Denton. Hey, Warren, stop fooling around with that gun, huh? It's liable to go off. That's right, Denton. It might go off. It's not as dangerous as an atom bomb, maybe. But it wouldn't make any difference to you if you were dead. Put it down for Pete's sake. Put it down. Warren, I swear it's the truth. It was only for laughs. He got the idea when the Chinese grabbed those guys in the sub. He figured that, well, this was the perfect time to prove that the shelter was really important. It was, it was like a, well, you know, a, a demonstration. Yeah, it was a demonstration, all right. But not the kind you think. What do you mean? I mean, it was for her, for his wife. His wife must have known about the gang? No, Petra didn't know. He didn't want her to know. Because he wanted to prove something to her. He wanted to prove that she needed his food, clothing, and shelter. What? He forced her to make a choice. That was his idea all along. Well, I don't get it, Warren. I mean, it was just a joke. Whatever she thinks now, I mean, she'll think different later. No, Denton. She won't be able to go back on her choice later. Sloane knew that. Sloane had it all figured out. Look, forget it, Warren. It, it, it's all over. I... I don't mean just the gag. I mean this business with the Chinese. They released those guys from the sub. They made some kind of a deal. Don't ask me what. All those stories about military moves, they were just rumors. The crisis is over, Warren. And so is the joke. No. <laughs> no, I don't think it's over yet. What do you mean? Where'd you get all that stuff you broadcast, Denton? Who wrote your script for you? Oh, I patched it together. I used a lot of... Civil defense handbooks, that kind of thing, you oh, know. these books over here? Yes. I tried to make it sound authentic. Well, you did a darn good job. Oh, gee. Thanks, Warren. Now let's see if you can keep on doing a good job. Warren, what do you mean? Well, like I said, <laughs> the joke isn't over. <laughs> you... You shouldn't have done it, Sloan. It was terrible of you to do that to Warren. I did it for you, Petra. You know why I did it. You hated him because he was in love with me. No, 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 darling. I did it to prove that you didn't love him. At least not enough to give up everything that's important to you. I couldn't give up my life, Sloan. But that's what you would have been doing if you left me. You would have lost all the things that are your life. But you condemned Warren to death. No, no, Petra. I condemned him to life without you. I did it only to prove how much I love you. How much we need each other. I don't want to die, Sloane. I want to live. Of course you do. So do I. But you're my reason for living, darling. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I'm so scared. Please. Don't stop holding me. I'm so afraid. Oh, there's nothing to be afraid of anymore. What? It's true. There's no reason for any of us to be afraid anymore. Uh, Chip, Tina. Yeah, well, well, what is it? I have something to share with you. A little story that I hope you'll find amusing. Amusing? For Pete's sake, Sloan, are you mad? As if there could be anything funny about this. Well, wait until you hear. Chip, look. That man is back on the screen. <laughs> Good old Denton. You really did a fine job this evening, didn't you? Let's hear him, for heaven's sakes. An intense shower of radioactive particles has followed the detonation of a hydrogen bomb over the city of Poughkeepsie, New York. Poughkeepsie? And that's practically next door. A widespread fallout of highly radioactive matter carried by winds of more than 50 miles per hour. 
and complicated by steadily falling rain in the New York area. Hey, 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 Denton, are, are you crazy? That wasn't in the script. Be quiet. Do not, under any circumstances, leave your homes or shelters until so advised by your local civil defense authority. We repeat, do not leave your present place of shelter. He's gone clean out of his mind. He wasn't supposed to say that. If you have been outdoors or exposed to what you may believe are fallout particles, clean yourself and your clothing thoroughly. Discard all items which may have been heavily contaminated, especially food and drinking water. But it's, it's not true. No, none of it really happened. What's the matter with you, Sloan? Well, none of this is real, Petra. That, that isn't Denton Barnes. Oh, good Lord, Chip, he's gone completely insane. I mean, I mean, I mean it is Denton Barnes, but it's not a real news program. If you show any symptoms of radiation sickness, rest all you can. Take aspirin, motion sickness pills for nausea. Drink plenty of liquid. Now listen, it's all a joke. It's just a joke. If your symptoms are serious, contact the medical authorities. If any are operative in your area. Yeah, there's your joke, Sloan. Who's going to take care of anyone else? Now, will you please listen to me? We repeat. Do not leave your shelter until you are advised. Keep doors and windows tightly shut. Do not permit deadly radiation to enter your shelter. All levels of radiation in this area are reported as dangerously high. This is Denton Barnes, and this station is now leaving the air. Now, no, that isn't right, you idiots. There will be no more television transmission in this area until further notice. Stay tuned to your local civil defense radio station for other instructions. Listen, listen, I, I swear this to all of you. There wasn't any bomb. There wasn't any fallout. That was Denton Barnes. My Denton Barnes. He works for me. We know that, Sloan. Just take it easy, well, huh? He did this for me. It was all a gag. It was a practical joke, don't you see? Sit down, Sloan. Have a drink. No. <laughs> Look, this isn't an ordinary television set. It's closed circuit. Denton is in my own house. Right now. Look, I'll show you. Sloan, where are you going? I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going up there. Didn't you hear what he said? There's dangerous radiation out there. You can't let it into the shelter. You'll kill all of us. I swear to you, there isn't any danger. But to stop him, we'll be safe in here if we just wait. Well, we'll, we'll wait forever, you idiots. He said to listen to the radio. There isn't any radio. I made sure there wasn't any radio. Chip, what are we going to do? We're locked up in here with a crazy man. Now, Stone, please. Sit down and try to calm yourself. No, 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 no. I'm going out there. I'll show you what idiots you all are. Don't do that, Sloan. Don't touch that door. Chip, be careful with that. I'm warning you, Sloan. I know how to use a shotgun. Sloan, be careful. I'm going out there. I can't let him kill all of us. Oh. Oh. Good Lord, Chip. He... He's dead. You killed Sloan. I... I had to do it. I, I had to. For the sake of all of us. For the shelter. We told you earlier that you were listening to a work of fiction. I just neglected to tell you how very fictional it was. A grim make-believe concocted by Sloan Cunningham. But now... The vice president of Network News is on his way to that vast wasteland in the sky. The victim of his own sense of humor. Of course, Mr. Cunningham had a practical purpose for his practical joke. He hoped to prove to his wife that survival was the most important thing in life. Unfortunately, he didn't survive his own demonstration. But what about Warren and Petra? How did they survive their ordeal? We'll let you know when we return shortly. If you've been reading about wise money management in your favorite publications, you've undoubtedly heard about Dreyfus Liquid Assets, one of the world's largest money market funds, and about the big yields you can get on your money right now. Start with as little as $2,500. Make added investments as low as $100. With Dreyfus Liquid Assets, your money is yours whenever you need it. Phone for it, have it sent to your bank, or write a redemption check for cash or to pay your larger bills. You keep right on earning that high yield compounded daily until your check clears. No penalties on interest, no sales charge, no charge for the checks. It's so simple, sensible, convenient. 
but find out for yourself. Call toll-free 800-228-5000 for free information and a prospectus, including management fee, charges, and expenses. Read the prospectus carefully before investing or sending money. Discover how Dreyfus Liquid Assets can help you get the lion's share of today's high money market rates. 800-228-5000. Toll free. 800-228-5000. wasn't real. There was no bomb. There was no radiation. There was only the fallout of human cunning and deceit. But what about the survivors of this non-atomic tragedy? Well, it wasn't long before Warren Crisp decided that the joke had gone far enough. And he went to release the victims of his own hoax. There was a great deal of explaining to be done before the police were satisfied. The Chip Lowry was merely a badly frightened man and not a murderer. As for the future of the lovers, we leave that to your imagination. That, of course, is still the power of dramatic radio. Your imagination. We hope you lend it to us the next time. Our cast included Ralph Bell, Bob Caliban, Evie Justa, and Don Scardino. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. You must not be taken alive, either. You know that. Goodbye. Goodbye, little patty cake. Goodbye, Chief. Wait. Why do we say goodbye? We are not leaving each other. We are embarking on a great journey together. Is that not so? Oh, yes, yes. But we cannot go this way. Which way? Pick up the telephone. But... At once. Tell them I want to see Martin Bormann. But why do we need Martin Bormann? Do as I command. This is Tammy Grimes. Inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next.